Good morning. Can you say good morning? Good morning! It's uh, Sunday. Just got back from church and we're getting ready to go shell corn. Uh, ran the dryer late last night until a little after midnight. Phil started it up this morning around 8. It's been running, but we still got three lights on on our wet bin. So we've got a lot of wet corn around. We're probably going to catch the wet bin today. And, uh, that's going to limit how much we can do. Which is okay. Um, our dryer is picking up a little bit. We're up to 800 bushel an hour. We were down in the 650 range last night, so uh, that's good. And we're not drying it quite as dry. They'll set the set point up to 15, throw 14 and a half. So that'll help move bushels through. I'm going to ask him about using our top dry, whether or not we should be starting to dry some corn through that just to help us keep up and go a little faster. We got to fill that bin. We might as well dry corn with it. So let's see. All right, we are fueling the combine. Um, Dad picked up all these ears. I think we had a tree down in a spot on one field and he took the chainsaw over. We had to shell around it. He took the chainsaw over and uh, cut up the tree and then picked all the ears. So I've got Rylan carrying them over and throwing them in the corn head for me. You're doing a good job, bud. All right, so we got those ears put in there. We're waiting on our fuel. Just gonna walk out here in the field a little ways, kind of where we finished up last night, and uh, check our losses. Let's look at the ground, see what it looks like. Make sure our combine was doing a good job. I'm pretty sure it was, but it never hurts to check. We have quite a thick mat of residue. Kind of shake it out and then push it off the way. We don't want any kernels to fall down to the ground where we can find them. Keep in mind, we're running big bushels up here, so a couple of kernels is not the end of the world. And we do have a couple, right? There's two right there. There's two small ones. There's a couple. There's a broken one. There's a little one. There's a big one. We should have caught that one. There's one over there, but we're well more than a square foot here. I should get a tape measure and actually measure and see what we've got, but I think our losses are very acceptable. Very acceptable. So this is 30 inches. Um, so for every foot we go that way, would be two and a half feet. And we've got to be two. So five five square feet here or so one two three four five six seven eight i it's two two kernels per square foot is a bushel loss um so we're not even 10 yeah we're fine we're fine we're not losing that much all right we are back to the farm and in a truck Heading to the field. Brock's here, he's bringing another truck. We're gonna go start shelling. We do still have a lot of wet corn. Three lights still on in our bin. Phil is getting the top dry ready, so he's gonna start filling that when we bring trucks back. Um, we're not gonna get a lot of corn through it, but it'll help. We might get 3,000, maybe 5,000 bushels through it today, which it'll help, right? So, uh, but we are likely gonna, gonna catch the bin today and not be able to do a lot because of that so it'll be fine just keep the dryer moving and it is moving well turns out my rider would rather ride with Brock than his dad so we're on our own but uh, here we go let's do this okay we're still kind of jumping around all over the place this is our first first we're gonna call it the first irrigation lane it's the first one on the south side of the field that we drove in and out of most of the year like this is the one we took to get back to the center and get over to the pump over there and, and stuff so um, this area over here where we're working now this is not the best area in the field so none of this will be part of our corn growers entries I'm still debating which one of these two we're gonna use here uh, so we're gonna open this up and, and work this way for a little bit and just kind of see what kind of yields we're getting 
it's still good corn. Imagine that. It didn't didn't go to heck overnight. So it's gonna be a fun one. Oh, it's gonna be a good day. Well, we're moving along here in a little bit. I've been working these edges. This edge here that's not as good a corn, although it's not horrible, but our yields dropped off maybe a bushel uh, the last four rounds here. I'm just gonna show you. I think I think Brock's got Ryland driving, but we're gonna be able to see him. Anyway, we got one more pass. That's I always make two passes with the planters, so it'd be four passes with the combine along the edges of the boundaries in the fields and stuff. So uh, we've made three. We got one more to do there that the rows are not they're not the same as the main part of the field. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, yeah, it's just not quite as good over here. It's not bad. It's just not quite as good. All right, something that's gonna be really interesting to watch here, looking at our yield map, right? So look at how green these strips were over here, over by the next lane that way. And we don't have near as much green right here. Now, when we water this, right, we're using a hard hose traveler gun. And so we have these lanes and we pull that gun out there and it sprays both directions from there. And then we pull it down this lane that's over here. Zoom in on this. So there's a lane here and a lane here and the water, like like half of this block gets watered from this lane and the other half gets watered from this lane, right? Well, when we started watering the first time we came in and we actually started in that second lane. So we started in this one up here. We then worked our way all the way, whoops. We started here, we went to this lane, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then we came back to here. Right, so it would have been five days difference in timing the time we did this one and this one down here. And so what I'm really interested to see ah, is when we get halfway across this block, does it instantly change? Does this side of it yield much better than this side of it? Because if that's the case, it's almost guaranteed that it's a timing issue. And the, that water getting on five days sooner than than over here uh, made that corn that much better. And it was every time. It wasn't just the first time we watered it. It was every time, right? Because we, we started there and we went north and then we came back here and we finished. And then we started there again when we went north. We came back here and we finished. And we started there again and went north. And so um, that's that's kind of the drawback, one of the drawbacks of that hard hose traveler system that we're using for irrigation is that uh, I can't cover the field that quick. It takes a week to get over 140 acres and so uh, there's a big difference in the stuff that got watered first and the stuff that got watered last. It is still really good corn and remember anything that's not red on there is above 220 bushel yield so it's still fantastic awesome corn the water still helped uh, it just there appears to be a little bit of a drop-off over here and it could be could be a soil type issue. The last time we had irrigated corn up here, um, this this area here was by far the worst of it, but we have tiled the field since then. And so, well, I guess not since then, but this area is a lot better than it used to be because of the, the drainage tile that we have put in. Well, we have caught our trucks. Um, the grain cart is not full, but we can't make another round. So we're gonna have to quit here and take the trucks back. Problem is that we don't have the Cascadia here. I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out, won't we? Well, right as we were leaving, Phil pulled up with the other truck, so Brock's going to empty that. We're taking the International home, the loud truck, as Ryland calls it, and uh, Phil bring the other one. We'll just get everything empty. We're way ahead. we got to wait on dryers anyway. There's no reason to push it up here. Alright, so we're drying with our grain handler, our big dryer. And uh, that is good, but we are also gonna start using our top dry. Here is our issue, right? We have one wet leg. So everything has to go through this leg, including keeping that dryer full while also filling this one. So we came in, we dumped a little bit through the pit here. We're topping off that dryer so that it doesn't need any corn for a little bit. And then we're gonna move our distributor, the handle on here, over to the GSI dryer. We're gonna fill that as much as we can while keeping an eye on the grain handler panel over here because if that light comes on we have to fill it we have to top it off and switch it back otherwise it'll shut down if it doesn't get enough corn so 
I'm letting the pit empty out into the grain handler right now. Once that's empty, we'll move our distributor and start filling the GSI. Climbed up this bin here so you can kind of see we're holding corn clear up at the top. This bin is not full, there's a false floor. Just the top ring. It's perforated. I don't know if we'll be able to see it from up here or not. No, it doesn't look like it. But it holds corn up on the top here. It's got those leveling bands, just like that one we were working on down to Berkey, just a little bigger. And uh, then there's a big fan. I'll show you that in a second. So see that big fan down there with a duct that blows hot air in right underneath the floor, this false floor up here. And it blows it up through this corn to dry it. And then once it's dry, there's some uh, chutes that are underneath there and we can drop them down with a cable to dump the corn down into the storage portion of the bin underneath. Cleanup crew is moving on piles. Look at that. Good work, kid. Well, we're watching him get a sample very closely. And uh, Phil's got the top drive fired up. We'll go out there and check that in a second. This is the spec chart for how long and stuff that we need to run. We have a 40 horsepower, 42 inch fan, 10.25 million BTUs. Our uh, plenum temp we run is 160 degrees. Uh, so if the corn is 25%, uh, you need to run it for 2.7 hours. So we're a little under that, so we think we set it for two and a half hours, and we'll see where we go from there. But, uh, yeah, it's a big fan and a big burner, and it's awesome. Rylan's our test man. Dump some in the... Let's see if that's enough. Okay, see if that's enough. Oh, careful. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh. Good job. There you go. Excellent. Okay, what is it? It's two twenty two thirty seven. Twenty two point three seven. We'll call that four. And what's the other number? Fifty-four point three. Okay, this one here. Oh. All right, dump that back in the bucket. Can you reach the bucket? Okay, go dump it in the pit. Good job. All right, it's going to be super noisy. You're not going to be able to hear me, but there's a very large fan and a big burner. Shellen, I've got my rider with me this time. You gonna stay with me? Okay, good. Well, we'll see how we do here. We'll get this little strip here finished up and keep working on that next block over there. Should get into some really good corn in the back over there. And then I think we're gonna start working on these triangles, uh, these pieces. We'll start with, start with this one, then we'll work on that one. If we can get those done today, that'd be a pretty good day. So the other day we had a row of shame, right? Because I counted wrong. This is what we consider a bonus row. These are not, I counted wrong, so we have partial pass. This is, we didn't have room in the field for a partial pass. And rather than not planting those three rows, we planted them, but those are a bonus row. So uh, we're, we're doing the, the, the wedges here between the, the edge of the field and the main part of the field. And uh, then we'll go finish that block over there, working on it. I, I think our average has dropped just a touch. 
Uh, but it may be coming back. We'll see when we get over there and make some rounds of the good stuff, what, what those kind of yields are. So we're over by the next lane here, kind of working this, this section off. Um, stalk integrity looks really good here on this 110 day corn. Uh, however, I can see the tar spot on it from here. Like it's standing just fine. I, I just question how much, if any, that that um, knocked our yield back getting this tar spot coming in late, not spraying it a second time like I probably should have. But that said, it is still really good corn. Like that's the instant, but. This is the average for the round. And we're up to 268. That's only going to keep climbing from there. It's good. It's really good. It's making our average go back up. So, yeah, we'll finish this little block off. This little little skinny one here, and uh, and then our average is going to drop when we go open up that triangle over there and do the end rows along the river and trees. One pass. We can barely make it from one end of the field to the other on a grain tank load. Come on, Brock. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. There it is. We made it. Didn't spill any. No camp corn. All of that corn is from one round. That's pretty dang good. So right now it says the round average is 267. But we're gonna watch that. We're gonna shut the auger off here. And I'm gonna click on that because it continues to, to total it up, I guess, as you um, finish until it starts the next load. Let's see what it does. So 268 is where it's gonna end up. 268.13 on that round. That's that's really good. It's really good. Keep in mind, the goal here was for the whole field to average 250. So right now we're at 261, so we're, we're well above that. Um, but when we get into the back that didn't get irrigated, the yield's gonna drop off. And when we get over by the trees, where we're about to head here shortly, uh, the yield is gonna drop off. The question is, do we have enough of this really high yielding stuff to keep it above 250 by the time we're done? It's gonna be close, because we've got up to 87 acres at a 260 average. So it takes a lot to bring that down over across, over across as many acres as we're doing. And there's more good corn out here yet that we're gonna leave for our corn growers contest that theoretically is the best yielding stuff out here. Uh, so even if we do these triangle pieces and we drop down to 245 or 248, it should come back up and you know, we should be in good shape. So I am ecstatic at how well this corn is doing. Well, like I said, it's getting better. This is literally the next round after the last clip that I filmed. And, uh, well, we went from 268 up to 275. We're going to call that one 275. Holy crap. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. We got one and a half more rounds here, three passes. And, uh, be done with these longer rows. Don't miss any. You guys make it hard to turn when I gotta hold the camera and yeah, I'm trying to push buttons over here. Long hand. Okay, it's all good. Um, one other thing that I wanted to address, I am fighting my yield loss monitor a little bit. Um, I, it's not horrible, but those bars on the bottom of that screen over there, right, that kind of tells me if, if and how much corn is coming out the back of the combine and where it's coming from. And you can see that on, on the left or the right side there is getting rather high. That is separator loss. That's stuff coming out the back of the rotor. And it's going up higher now than it has been. And the one on the left is shoe loss, stuff coming over the chaffer or the sieve. Uh, I don't like them up that high. They kind of they, they kind of been up and down a little bit. And I've been playing with stuff, but I've got I've got stuff set like as far as I want to go. And it's almost like if I drive a little faster, it, it comes down to an extent, but I don't know. So right there is not too bad. You really want it to run in the green. The center one is a summation of the outside two, um, and you want that to kind of be in the green because a little bit going over is okay, um, but you don't want it to be too much. And so 
that's calibrated for about where I want it, where it's in the green, it's acceptable amount of loss. Uh, and that's kind of where we're at now. Like right there, I would run that there all day. But sometimes for some reason, it spikes up a little bit. So I'm fighting with that, trying to adjust some settings. We're running this sort of fast and this pretty wide open um, for where I would normally, but it seems to be what's working and uh, we're gonna go with it. All right, agronomy lesson time. So yesterday Brock came on the radio at one point and he asked me, why are all the stalks so red? And I don't know if you guys can see that in front of me, but if you look over here next to us, can you see how the stalks on those plants are sort of a real dark, deep red? Let me see if I can move the camera with them a little bit, enough for you to be able to see it. Probably not, sorry. Um, but they're, they're just a real dark, deep red. Well, that's because the stalk is kind of still alive. I mean, it, the plant is obviously dead. There's no green left in it, but there's still a lot of juices and sugars that have built up in that stalk with nowhere to go. They're not filling the ear out. They're not going into the leaves. It's not translocating down into the roots. So that stalk is just full of sugars and water and it can't go anywhere. And so it turns it red. And if you look at our track on the grain cart over there, see how it's wet right in that middle streak? Well, that's where it's running over a corn stalk row, a destroyed corn stalk row, but it's basically squeezing all the moisture out of that row and it making the track really wet um, because of that. So that's why the stalks turn red. And that's why, um, that's, 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 what, that's what's causing that, I guess. Uh, if I, when I stop and get out sometime, I will show you a stick of the stalk that's got that red color to it. Okay, this finishes up that block. So we've got we've got these two blocks here that I think are where our corn growers entry is gonna be, although I could use this one here if I wanted to. We could harvest the stuff in the front, but we're just gonna leave that stuff for now. We're gonna come down here and work in this triangle, which is that corn over there. So let's let Brock know the plan. Are you um, you ready to fall way behind and have to go like heck? I think once you finish here, and we'll fill that truck, so we'll be waiting on the truck. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to fill the cart. I'm going to go work on this triangle over here and open up the end, so. Well, I'll do what I can. <laughs> okay, well, if you can fill that truck, go fill the truck and then come back here and figure out wherever I'm at. All right, let's go do it. Also, our yield is going to drop like a rock here. So we made it back up to 261.99. 3,000 to fill the truck. Just want to go dump it and come back. You need 3,000 more to fill the truck? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So we've got 92 acres done. So hopefully doing these ends, there's not enough acres to draw our yield down too much. But I know that these first pass on these ends is bad. I know that we've got a bunch of coon damage up here. Like this is gonna be the worst stuff we've done yet. And it's gonna hurt. Yeah, like I said, not great corn. Um, this right here is beaver damage. You can see they drug that corn into the river over there. And the coon damage is up here, but yikes. That'll drag an average down in a hurry. And there's the raccoons. It's not as bad as I thought. Not as bad as I remember seeing this summer, but they got a big area in here. Long area. Oh. There it is. We started back there along the river, that tree. We went down to that corner came down here. Dropped our average by 1.1 bushels per acre across the whole field. The whole field. Just doing that one round. Ouch. Alright, well we got the end rows done. That was brutal. Brutal. Took our average down from 262 to 259.2. That's what? Three, three bushel loss. Almost. Ouch. It's all right, hopefully the rest of this corn out here isn't isn't so bad. So uh, some of this did get irrigated. There are two irrigation lanes out here yet, including one right, right there, right in front of us. So this got watered. It kind of tapers off the farther you get into the point, but there's also a lot less acres once you get into the point. So it uh, should still be really good corn right in through here. 
home, Uncle Ron stopped and offered to give Rylan a ride back to the farm, and Rylan took it. I'm a little surprised, but uh, we're about done here anyway. I think we can basically fill the grain cart up, and then we are going to be full of corn, and the trucks are both full, so unless Phil makes it back real quick, which I don't think he will, we're going to have to stop anyway. So, uh, But yeah, we're, we're opening this up, doing some rounds in here. Uh, the last, the first first round I did over there was 263 or something like that. So yeah, we're back in the really good corn here. Okay, we've caught our trucks. So we made it past the next lane, which has a little corn in it that got mowed down. It was supposed to die, but it didn't. So now I'm going to have to harvest it. It got planted by mistake. Anyway, um, you can see we, we're definitely starting to tail off as we come down into this point. But it's still good corn. And uh, we've got one more irrigation lane over that way somewhere. So, uh, but I think I only pulled down that one once early in, Ju in June. So I don't know if it'll have made a huge impact or not. Um, you know, there's still 300s on the monitor in here. It's still excellent corn. We're gonna top off the grain cart there and the two trucks are full and then we're gonna take them back and empty them. And I'm gonna guess that we're gonna call it for the night because it's a quarter to seven. It'd be well after dark before we could come back up here. It's a Sunday. We've got lots of wet corn around anyway. There's no reason to come back up here tonight. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll take this up and go do that and uh, keep the dryer moving for the night, I would assume. So our, uh, our yield's still sitting, hanging in there at 259. Creeping up just a little bit from after we did those end rows. That's good. That bodes well for protecting that 250 average on the whole field. Um, what else? We're up to over 100 acres done here. 104 almost when we get done with this strip. So, uh, of 160 something. So we should be able to finish this up tomorrow fairly easily. I did talk to my judge for the uh, corn growers contest. He's going to be here late morning tomorrow. So we're gonna we're gonna get this, these contest entries in, and we'll see how we do. Well, I just got back to the farm here. We're dumping our, uh, we got three lights on, but the top two are not, so our wet bin's not full. Uh, we got room to fill in the, the GSI dryer, so that's good. And our grain handler is actually putting some more bushels out. Things are moving a little faster today, so we're getting more throughput, over a thousand. That's fantastic. So, yeah, um, we're not plugged full of wet corn, but we have plenty, so I, I highly doubt we're going back to the field, but. It's, I suppose it's possible. We didn't go back to the field. Uh, in fact, I came home, brought Ryland home, and uh, the plan was to go back late tonight and shut the dryer down, but Phil just called me. It's almost 11, said he's still there, and uh, he would take care of it. Okay, because I'm ready to go to bed anyway. So um, we're going to do those corn growers entries tomorrow. Hopefully, they'll go really well, and we'll have some really good corn up there, but we will see. Um, it's awesome. The whole field is awesome. I, I, 250 average across it was the goal from the beginning, and it's we're it's in within reach. So uh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to finish up there tomorrow. There's still 60 acres. Uh, it'd take a pretty decent day, but we are getting through some of the wet corn, so we should have a decent day tomorrow anyway. So uh, Brock's not gonna be around. Dad's gonna run a combine, which means we'll be in the cart. Hopefully, we can get the drone up there a little bit and uh, get some good video and stuff. But uh, Record-breaking corn is the best corn we've ever raced, and it's lots of fun to do it. So thanks for watching this one. Hit that like and subscribe button. Questions, comments, leave them down below, and we'll see you guys again in the morning.